just in case there's anybody who has any doubt, my Lord, I want to say it here in public, that for the purposes of this court and the purposes of this application, this court is, has no option but to take that judgment as granted. Mm. Even if your Lordship read the judgment and said, I've never seen any judgment so bad, there's mm. nothing you can do mm. about it, there's nothing I can do about it, and there's nothing anyone can do about it. So, so just on that point, can we, can we clear up an ambiguity in the papers about the effect of the application for leave to appeal? Yes, my Lord. Is it your case that the, um, the filing of your application for leave to appeal uh, suspended the operation? Yes. Of the it is, my Lord. Yeah. And, and, and uh, let me explain and how it fits into so, so, so while I, I must accept that it's a fact, yes. what you urge me to accept, that the order was fi final in effect, yes. and the filing of the application for leave to appeal suspended. In, yes, that, that's correct. And the irrationality you impute to the JSC is that it just didn't appreciate it. didn't recognize that fact, among other things. That, my Lord, your, your Lordship is making my job much easier. The, uh, 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 let's let's go there because that's the third interpretation point as it were I'll, I'll, I'll deal with it very quickly what we are saying my lord and and this is again um, I've dealt with this section 18 things um, many times at different levels and there, there are always these common problems <coughs> around it <coughs> remember the difference between us and the respondents is that this is an 182 event and we say it's an 18-1 event, yeah. as your Lordship just summed it up. Yeah. Now, this is, these are the simple reasons we say it's an 18-1 event, my Lord, is your Lordship will find the, the actual wording of the, sorry, <coughs> of the sections in our, um, um, Notice of motion uh, uh, and, and our, f our funding of, of the, I think it's 02-60 something. Yes, I have the act in front of me. You it, don't need oh, to perfect. And, uh, okay, fine. Let, let, me, let me also just rather do that here. So let's start at 18 a and yeah. just read it together. Um, so 18 says subject Okay, the, the, the two things do define whatever the default position is. Yeah. Subject to subsection 3, unless the court under exceptional circumstances orders are otherwise, the operation and execution of a decision that is an interlocutory order, not having the effect of a final judgment, which is the subject of an application for leave to appeal, is not suspended and pending the decision of the application uh, uh, or appeal. Now. All we're saying, my Lord, we accept, we concede that by, when we wrote the letter on Monday, this, this Monday, the uh, applications for leave to appeal were not in, but we obviously indicated that they're coming and as soon as they came, we sent them. In fact, I think, if I'm correct, uh, subject to correction, by the time the JSC had its meeting, we had already lodged. Yes, well, the, the, in its letter, the JSC refers to section 18.2. Yes. And so I think- So they must have, yes. I think yeah. they must have yes, appreciated we, we can, that either their decision had to be taken on the basis that the appeal of would definitely two. come, or that it had already come. Absolutely, yeah. as the court pleases, my lord. And, and, and uh, I want to kill two birds with one stone, as we discuss this, my lord. The first bird is to answer your lordship's question as to why we're saying it's an 18-1, 18-2. The second one comes from what your lordship's remarks just now, which is why we assail the JSC decision on this point. In other words, we're saying on this point, they made a material error of law. And as your Lordship knows, material error of law leads to irrationality or, or illegality. Well, if they made an error that's as basic as you say they did, yes. then that's, that definitely Th that's renders it. their decision yes. rational. Absolutely. And there might be some highly complicated explanation in which an error of law yeah. doesn't lead to irrationality, absolutely. but I can accept for the for, for, in this for, for, case, it does. This, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. If there is such an Yes, if, if yeah, a, a big if. Yes. Thank you, Mother. Now, so since we're on the same page on that, my Lord, let me then explain this in, in simple terms. So we say there are two exceptions which are contained in 18.2 that assists us in our interpretation. Yeah. The first is the word interlocutory order, a decision that is an interlocutory order. Yeah. Many people 
read that to mean an interim order. But that's not the same thing. Because as your lordship knows, there are interim orders and there are interim orders. <coughs> and that, that has been exp uh, explained in a case that I did called Libashe that everyone knows, uh, I think is the most so recent. The, the section itself appreciates that there may be interlocutory orders of final effect because it yes. only applies in circumstances Absolutely. where there's Absolutely. an interlocutory order not having Absolutely. the effect of a final Absolutely. effect. Absolutely. Yes, and that's the second point. Yeah. So, so we're saying, my Lord, forget about the final effect for a minute. Yeah. If it's not an interlocutory order, even if it had or didn't have a final effect, we, it, that would favor us. But secondly, as your Lordship called, let's assume we're wrong on the interlocutory order thing. If it has final effect, then it's excluded as well. Now, so we say on both legs, my lord, that favors us. And every lawyer, and I'm sure my learned friends will be no exception, will accept that if there's an application for leave to appeal and you can discount 18.2, then by default, then you are in, in 18.1. Yeah. So that, that's our argument. So our argument is simply this, my lord, that uh, because of the operation of those two exceptions, we're in the 18.1 land. And once we're in the 18.1 land, Contrary to what all our learned friends are saying, no, no, why, even on alternative relief, why don't you go to 18.3? No, it's them who should go yeah. to 18.3. They are the ones who have a duty if they don't want to, the, the, the order to be, to be suspended to, to do an 18.3 application. Thank you, my lord. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to belabor that point anymore. Uh, 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 the, the, the court, yeah. uh, I, I, I'm not saying the no, court agrees with me. It yeah, understands. No, I, have, I have the point. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, my lord. <clears throat> So that's a, a huge interpretational point on the one hand, but secondly, a, a, an attack on the reasoning process of the, of the JSC. So I want to do it one by one. Now, my Lord, if you allow, your Lordship allows me to then, I'll, I'll do another double take. <coughs> to, 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 to demonstrate to your Lordship that the, what we are talking about, while accepting the, 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 the for, for the purpose of this, that the, 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 what your logic correctly called the fact of that order, that, the, that, that, that we accept. But what this case is all about is about the constitutional effect or the constitutional impact of that order. We're not attacking the order. We're simply saying its constitutional impact results in the uh, JSC as matters currently stand being improperly constituted. That's really all. It's, it's, it's that simple. <coughs> and that, that's the second basis on which you attach, attach yes. the JSC's decision. You Absolutely. JSC ought to have appreciated that it would be improperly constituted Absolutely. and proceeded. Yes, and if you look at their letter, my lord, you will see yeah. that that actually is the main is the main uh, mm. uh, 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 material error of law, uh, as, as it were. For and them, they, the, the main... They essentially say, you're still a... Dr. Klopper is yeah. still a member of the so JSC. So what's he, the problem? He just can't come. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, 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 that's what they're saying. Whereas, in, in reality, my Lord, if we're correct on this point of the constitutional impact, and let me, if your Lordship forgives me, let me just quickly get rid of... of, of no, I'll deal with it when we deal with the exclusion. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> Let me stick to the, to, 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 to the constitutional impact. <clears throat> so if the constitutional impact of that uh, valid uh, um, order of the Western Cape High Court is to create an unconstitutional situation, a situation that is inconsistent with the constitution, if I, if I succeed in persuading your lordship yeah. that the situation created is inconsistent with the constitution, then your lordship has no option, but no option, because section 172 1A says you must. Once I can show that constitutional inconsistency, your lordship must declare uh, that conduct to be unconstitutional. The, and the so we get to the same result if I concluded that the JSC had ir acted irrationally. Would yes, yes. No, no, no. Actually, my lord, section, uh, sec that would be in breach of section one C. Absolutely, absolutely. In yeah. fact, my lord, in, in, and uh, I'm glad your lordship asked that question yeah. because again, it's misunderstood. That's the difference between section 38 of the constitution and 172. Mm -hmm. The lordship has, has hit the nail on the head. Some people confuse the two. Section 38 deals with 
an infringement or threatened violation of a, a, a right in the Bill of Rights, mm. right? But Section 172, 1A, as your Lordship uh, uh, has correctly summed up, deals with the uh, inconsistency with the Constitution, not just with the Bill of Rights. So any section of the, yeah. So that's the difference which is usually misunderstood. And your Lordship is 100% right. Whether it's Section 1C or Section 200 or Section 300 or whatever, if you are able to sh to to to, <laughs> I, know, to I, I know I know isn't. Yes. No, 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 no is 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 uh, uh, definitely uh, on point. But um, it, uh, I'm for effect. Yes. So, so I'm saying a lot. Yeah. Wh wh whatever uh, section of the of the constitution is violated, yeah. or it, 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 the, the once that is established, of course, that's the gateway. Once that is established, then you and the constitutional writers, my lord, were very. It, it was a deliberate uh, way to phrase sev one a as opposed to one seventy two one b, because that's what constitution constitutional supremacy is. Yeah. We can't say the constitution is supreme, and then we say a court has a discretion. Well, it seems to me the one seven two duty uh, is to declare any conduct that is inconsistent with the constitution, constitution. to be so. Absolutely. But then there's a wide remedial discretion uh, yeah, about what, what what a court does. What then. to do? Yes. Yeah. In fact, sometimes a court may do nothing, <laughs> but 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 what it, a court is enjoined to do constitutionally. It's a, duty, a constitutional duty, is once established, it must declare. Yeah. And, and that has been said, my, my lord, if, if, if you are eligible, allow me one minute to digress as to why that is so. One is the sup constitutional supremacy, we've dealt with that. Yeah. But the second one, which is always forgotten, is something called the doctrine of, of uh, uh, objective constitutionality. Now, the, that's just a lot of big English. But what it really means, my lord, is that when a lord, the court does that and makes that declaration, it is not declaring the conduct of the JSC to have been unconstitutional last week or on Tuesday when it had a meeting. It's declaring that that conduct is unconstitutional since 1996. Yeah. That's the... the, the so it's... And that's the, the retrospectivity. Is absolutely, yes. That's why sometimes the court then ameliorates that, yeah. yes. So it is that serious. That's why we have something, um, a lot, another misunderstood concept called the Gijima principle. Mm. And it goes like this. Once a court has a 172-1A issue in front of it, it must, even in the face of unreasonable delay, in the face of mootness and all these other niceties, that court, according to the Gijima principle, still has to grant the order. Why? Because all these uh, niceties, uh, are notwithstanding, a, a court cannot go back to chambers <laughs> to, to put it uh, 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 to demonstrate it and leave an unconstitutionality sitting on the table simply because it took me six months or whatever whatever that, it's that serious because that implicates the supremacy of the constitution <clears throat> now that then puts a burden on me my lord to convince your lordship that there is indeed an inconsistency with the constitution in not in the in the full court in the conduct of the yes. JSC, yes. And so the two, the two points you've made so far <coughs> are that the JSC misconstrued the effect of the order, absolutely, uh, and that it misconstrued the impact of, of Section 18 of excluding mm. um, Dr. Schlaufe from the proceedings. Yes. Is there any further point? Yes, and Section 18. You remember we yeah. just discussed. The, the doesn't that really collapse back into? final or interlocutory effect of the order. If the if the JSC thought that the um, order was interlocutory in effect when it was only final, in, when it was actually final in effect, um, uh, it doesn't, the, the issue about whether 18.2 or 18.1 or 18.3 apply um, falls into that misconception. No, my lord, with, with the greatest respect. Mm. If it, it, it's, it's, it's much more serious than that. It is that, of course, but uh, it's more serious than that. Mm. It, it, it has two serious impacts. Mm. It says that the JSC, when it was given, remember the JSC is an organ of state. Mm. So, uh, so that's the best way to put it. Sorry to interrupt you, but the better way to put it <coughs> is your case is 
that the JSC failed to appreciate that the order was suspended by the application. Absolutely. Of the and in yeah. doing so, uh, uh, as we discussed earlier, committed a material error, error of law. Yeah. And if, 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 if the JSC's decision is irrational, then the Lordship has no option. Yeah. As, but to and to then the, and then there's the the constitutional impact of proceeding in Dr. Schlope's absence. Is there anything else that, in your submission, uh, vitiated the rationality of the JSC? Yes. Yeah. Yes, my lord. The, the the okay. Let me put it this way, my lord. If 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 um, the, uh, uh, if your lordship allows me, I won't answer the question directly. I just want to to start at the end. One of the giveaways, and, and we say this, unfortunately, your logic has not seen our reply, but your logic will find in our reply that one of the things we say is that one of the giveaways mm. that the JSC's decision was irrational is something that is said by one of its commissioners, uh, Mr. Mbaitobi, in his uh, supporting affidavit yes. in that. <laughs> he actually says, my lord, I... I'll uh, uh, find that in, uh, in um, section six, page. Anyway, my lord, let me paraphrase for to save time. Your lordship will, will t take a lordship there. But this is well, what I is have it here. It's uh, zero six dash two eight seven. Dash two eight seven. Yeah. Yes, my lord. All right, I'll, 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 I'll get to it. Let me just paraphrase your logic. We'll yeah. read it in, in, well, there's no good time. I was going to say good time, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately. No, but, but I have already read it. Uh, yes. So if oh, you just refer you. To, to the part of it, just while you're we're yes. on this point, mm -hmm. I still don't see the replying affidavit on case lines. If, if someone on your team could sort that out. Yes, my team is here. Yeah. Can, can you just reload? Yeah. Quite busy. Thank you. Okay. And if he can't sort it out for any reason, just email us. We'll, we'll give you a yeah. hard copy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, in due course. Yeah. Uh, now, there are, there's a, your, your Lordship, again, I won't bore you with, with all these authorities. Your Lordship will know there are cases, the line of, of authorities, National Lotteries Board, um, there's a case of uh, Zuma, this has the DA and so on. It's yeah. all in our heads. Yeah. <coughs> but the, the, the gist of those cases, my Lord, is this. Uh, the first one was uh, Kachalia J.A. I think the second one was um, uh, Wallis uh, J.A. and the other one is Nafsa A.D.J.P. <coughs> and they all say this paraphrased. When you give, and we're now, my lord, busy really scrutinizing the letter of reasons that is given by, by the J.C. And I'll show your lordship that that letter is not worth the paper to return on. We've dealt with the section 18 thing. The, now, in, 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 in this phase, my lord, the, 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 that line of cases says, uh, makes the following simple proposition. If I do something, and then uh, my learned friend, I'm, I'm an organ of state, says, why did you do the something, and uh, give me reasons. Then I give, them, I give her reasons A, B, C. Then, uh, she challenges the, the, the... This is the reasons that you gave at the time. That Absolutely. You yeah. can't supplement your reasons. You can't, in, the and, and in the answering affidavit. Yeah. Yes, that, that, that's the principle. Yeah. So the, the, what, what uh, Justice uh, Kachalia called the ex post facto rationalization yeah. in the answering affidavit must just be chucked out. It doesn't count. Yes. Uh, your Lordship got the point. Yeah. yeah. So contrary to that uh, 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 noble principle, the JSC tells us that no, after we gave you the reasons, we then went and did some research and uh, um, Mr. Ngatobi says, I, I, I then went and spoke to each division and what have you, what have you, and then they give us a litany of reasons why the order should not be uh, uh, well, Aren't they just trying to talk about the balance of convenience? Yes, I, yes no, I know my lord. I'm not sure they, but they were being proffered as considerations that were present to the JSC's mind when it took the decision not to postpone. No, my Lord, um, I, I, what, what they're saying is the balance of convenience yes, yes, doesn't yes, favor yes. you. I appreciate that, yeah. but well, then, then that's even, even worse, mm. because if that is so, then uh, again, it's that thing of elevating the alternative. Th then we must check it out for that reason, because it's got nothing to do with the real case, which is the, the declarator. Right. Right. 
if we if and only if we ever get to the alternative relief then all that might be relevant so otherwise all that is just completely but I certainly and I appreciate so I, you, you can certainly take it from me for the purposes of your argument but I don't in order to consider mm -hmm. whether the JSC's decision was rational mm -hmm. um, uh, it would be a mistake to ascribe the facts um, given in Mr. Nukai Toby's um, supporting, supporting affidavit to the people who made the decision um, uh, or, to, or to say that, that to find as a fact that all of this was present to their yeah. mind at the time they made the decision. That's a hallelujah well, what, what was, what was um, <laughs> present to their mind is what they told you. But absolutely. No, they, they, then we're fine, my lord. Uh, in, the, in the letter? Yes, no, they, they, then we're done on, on that one. I, I promise you, I won't even breathe mm. a word about it. Yeah. So if we then go, go back uh, uh, um, um, to the letter, you'll find that, my lord, uh, irrespective of the, you know, lawyers uh, can dissect these things, but really there's one reason in, um, in that letter, and it is that... Um, the the um, JS or rather the full court did not um, uh, kick Dr. Klose out. That then takes us, my lord, to the cases, to the authorities. The authorities. Yes. So, so sorry, just to just to sum up, so I know yeah. where you're going. Yes, my lord. Um, on the basis that. The question of the rationalities of the rationality of the JSC's decision must be determined mm. um, by assessing the reasons they give in the letter. Yeah. You you really only want me to um, find uh, that paragraphs 2.1 and 2.2 uh, of the are letter irrational. are just wrong, and that yes. that renders the decision irra irrational. Absolutely. Yep. And, and not as your logic knows. I, and I don't want my lender friends to, to think, mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm the, and, and I know your logic is, that's not what the logic means. But when we say wrong in this sense, we don't mean in the appeal sense. We, no, no, no. There's we, been we mean a misconception. material error of law. Yes. There's been a misconception yes. of a basic. Absolutely. Your case is that there's been a misconception of a basic factual or legal proposition Absolutely. that has tainted the rationality of the JC decision. And the two respects mm -hmm. in which you say, um, uh, there's a misconception are essentially spelled out in 2.1 and 2.2 and, 2 .2 and the preamble my lord, uh, that's where they talk about section 18 yes which we have covered yeah. yes so, yes. so okay. to be if you want to be generous my lord you say there are three reasons they've given is the 18 mm. two reason yeah the second one is is the non non um uh, non setting aside yeah of of of, of dr Lopez's membership and then the third one is really the same as the second one where they say the full court has interdicted from participating in the process. It's expressly found that Dr. Chopper's absence would not render the JSC's decision mm. operational. That's just wrong. That one is, is wrong in the, in the true sense. Mm. Le, le, let me tell you why, my lord. Because the, your lordship knows that at paragraph 56, I think, of the, of the judgment, um, That last one is, is just, it should take one second to, yes, yes. to, to deal with it. Yes, it's paragraph 56, yeah. 2-66. What the JSC, either, well, I, I won't ascribe any deliberate intent to any, let's say it's a material mistake here. They say, the, the, the court there said, the su respondent submission that the JSC would not have a quorum in order to take a valid decision if Dr. Sopra is interdicted from participating in that forum is incorrect. Well, I can tell you, my lord, for free that we never made that submission, but mm. that, that's not for you, that's for the appeal mm. court, yeah. Uh, but assume for, for now, for present purpose, that we did. The, the, the court then goes on to say that um, the, in, the, in the premier case, uh, the issue was whether the premier's attendance was necessary, and the court concluded that it was, which is correct, by the way, and, that, and we rely on that very heavily. Yes. Yeah. Now, the, the mistake that everybody makes is to conflate two simple things that are not the same, quorum and constitution or composition. 
We accept, again, for the avoidance of any doubt, if anybody wants to accuse us of saying the absence of Dr. Shobe is going to affect the quorum of the JSC, well, I'm saying here loud and clear, no. We accept implicitly that the quorum will not be affected. What is affected is the proper constitution of the body in our respectful submission. Yes. That's all. And those are two unrelated things. So again, when the JSC then says in its 2.2, my lord, that the, 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 the High Court found that uh, you know, it, it doesn't matter, well, it, you can just scratch out 2.2 .2 because we agree, but that cannot be a reason to deal with what we are raising, which is the composition. Yeah. So that's why I say in reality, we are really left at 2.1. Now, the, my lord, let me just make another point, which whatever I do, I must not forget. And, and this deals now with, the, with, with what I was saying, the other authorities. Yeah. Now on the second leg, the interpretation points, I've dealt with all yeah. my lord. On the second leg, which is what we call unjustified exclusion. Yeah. This is the case of the other side. And I'll show you how, how fallacious it is. They say, and you can see how uh, clever lawyering uh, constructs this argument. So they say, yes, we accept that in the, the SCA has twice said in Premier and in Bar Council that the composition of the, of the JSC is all, all and for one. Everyone must, must participate in the decision. They say, we even accept the, that, that principle comes from the old cases, Ski Road, and, and, and so on. And the Lex Impossibilia principle, and so on, and so on. But, they say, ah, but the problem is that MK and Dr. Chope uh, have forgotten one thing, which is that the, um, that court made the qualification that it must be an unjustified exclusion. And then they say, how can it be an unjustified exclusion because there's a court order? Very attractive argument at face value, but it, it is absolutely wrong. <coughs> you see, this court is bound by the SCA decisions. And to the extent that the SCA, even if there was some discrepancy between the SCA decision and the full court decision, this court would obviously be bound by the SCA decisions. Yeah. So I'll concentrate on them. What was said, my lord, in both cases, completely but completely assists our case, my lord, and shows that the JSC's uh, reasoning was completely flawed. What was said in the, in the, in the, in the let's start with the, um, Cape, the premier case. There, my lord, um, Helen Zille, who now has flip-flopped and, and taken a different uh, stance in her affidavit, was saying that the JSC was not properly constituted because she was not in the, in the meeting um, in terms of, um, I think it's 1K. <clears throat> yeah. And, and she, she, she then said, well, for that reason, because firstly, I was not there as the premier, but also my alternate was not there. Therefore, uh, the, 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 the meeting was not properly constituted. And the SDA, for good reasons, agreed with her. And, um, but now she wants, us, she wants uh, the, uh, the other side of the coin. The SCA agreed with her, with her on the following basis, my lord. The case, uh, and I must concede this, is, is not on all fours in the following respect, my lord. The, 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 the gravamen of that discussion was about 178.6, as your lordship knows, the majority yeah. or no majority. But in the course of that, the court did two things. It reaffirmed the principle, and that's why Ms. Zille won the case. It reaffirmed the principle that everyone must be there. But it also left open a very important question. You'll remember, I think it's paragraph 21 of that judgment, my lord. Yeah. It was raised by, um, uh, or rather, the, the, the court accord, Jones J, had also made Ms. Zille to win the case on another uh, aspect. And that aspect was this. Ms. Zille had raised the following point. She said, 
one of the advocates that are in 1E had not yet been appointed, and therefore the body was not properly constituted, and she was right, of course. Again, nothing to do with the quorum, but the constitution. And the court said, because we have already found that she's right on the primary uh, ground, we, we're going to leave open the second one. So which means, as we speak, that finding of Jones J, that even on the second leg, she was supposed to win, stands. <coughs> or at least it was not overturned by the SCA. I, I can't put it higher than that. <coughs> um, now, so what does that do, my lord? Two things. One, we must remember that our case is stronger. I'll, I'll tell you why it's stronger than both the Bar Council case and the, and the Premier case. In both of those cases, my lord, the so-called absent member of the JSC was somebody who was, um, uh, who, who, who was allowed to have an alternate. In this case, there's no such, and that's the kind of thing Mr. Malwana was alluding to. The what, what the, delegation, <laughs> the, the, the delegation of six in 178.1H must be as it is. It's a half a dozen, or it's all or nothing. They, they are not allowed to even have alternates, unlike, unlike all these other people. The, the judge, the chief judge, even the judge president and the premier and so on, those people are allowed to have uh, uh, alternates. Yeah. But here, it's, you, 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 you have to attend personally or the, you must not be there. So that's a crucial distinction, which makes this particular case distinguishable in the positive sense in that it, it, it's even... Notionally, the National Assembly could uh, elect someone else, but then they'd be reconstituting Absolutely. the JSC. Absolutely. The they entire squad. They wouldn't be giving Dr. Floppy an alternative. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, my lord. Your lordship, uh, yeah. uh, that gets, gets rid of something else I was going to say about yeah. alternative. In other words, the, even this, <laughs> the, there's this thing that gets bended about, oh, what's the problem? MK could simply um, uh, substitute Dr. Thorpe and put somebody else. <laughs> no. How? Under what basis, on which constitutional basis? There is no such constitutional basis. The logic is correct. The only way you could ever achieve, ever achieve that would be to take the entire resolution back to the National Assembly and then have a new delegation, uh, which may or may not include uh, uh, Dr. Thorpe and all that. And that's why in our letter we said, even if we don't accept that, that can be I done. think it's common ground that the National Assembly would have to hold the election again if it wanted yes. to replace no, it. Yes, no, no, no. But yeah. it's not. No, it's not, my lord. All these parties are saying they, they don't know why, what, what, what we are complaining about because MK can simply somewhere um, put somebody else. But the, uh, your lordship is quite correct. The only way you could do that is to take, to revoke the designation and that's another um, facility that is used by FUL in particular. They could, <laughs> suddenly now, they, you know, sometimes you surreptitiously do something. Suddenly they talk about designations. Mm. There are no designations. It's a designation of, of uh, So that de designation would, would have to be redone. And that, my lord, to be, to be quite uh, honest, was all we were asking from the JC. We're saying even, we, we don't agree that you can substitute, but for the, for the present purposes, say, say you can. We say to them, the, uh, the parliament is in recess, the thing is starting on Monday, and uh, even if that thing was, well, well, that substitution was allowable, it, it can practically be done. So please postpone, and I'll, I'll even be more uh, strict, I'll be much stricter than Mr. Ngalwan, uh, six months. Three months, two months, whatever it is. You could even say, okay, we'll postpone for a period of two months or three months. Within that period, <coughs> this clarity must be sought. And, and uh, obviously, we know our courts would accommodate. This is a big issue. The um, Part B must be expedited. And, um, and in that two or three months, the whole thing will be cleared up, my lord. So that's all we're saying. We're saying avoid all this litigation. So a three-month suspension to... Uh, work out whether Dr. Chlope can still be on the JSC. Absolutely. Not a three-month suspension for you to choose someone else through the parliamentary process. I, even that, my lord, if, if, if you like. L l l let's, let's say for anything, mm -hmm. but, but we have to be honest to your lordship and say that our, our, our uh, advice 
is that the, the so-called substitution is not is not uh, viable. But mm. for the purposes of this case, my lord, assume that it is. Assume that it is viable. So uh, your lordship is quite correct. So we're saying three things. We're saying postpone for two or three or three uh, months, pending one of three things. And again, yeah. even this is misconstrued. We say either the um, and the logic will find that in our notice of motion at, at 023. The final determination of the appeal against the orders of the judgment uh, of the full court, the logic knows what that means. Yeah. The second one, we say the final determination of part B of the applications pending in the Western Cape. Let me pause there. Both of those things, my Lord, can uh, conceivably be uh, done within a month or two um, yeah. if, if everyone commits to it, quite frankly. Um, because the pleadings are there, there might be a bit of supplementation here and there and so on, exchange of heads. We, we all know case management would make, could make sure that those cases, I don't want to be overly optimistic, are ahead, let's say, by November or, or, or early mm. December. <clears throat> and, but the, the third one is even lighter, my lord. We say that the final determination of the main application uh, set out in Part BB. Now, that, is, that, that case, my lord, can happen next week quite frankly, and it can, be, it can be done. Because that case is about one thing only, it's about the exercise that your Lordship and I have just done now, which is looking at that letter. Remember, BB simply says, the, the decision of the JSC to refuse postponement in sitting at Shedi on the 7th is reviewed and set aside. That's it. So it's only about the letter. And then here are the more important words, whichever occurs first. Yeah. In other words, next week, in the next two weeks, if we set down that part BB, and this whole thing will be over. Yeah. And, 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 uh, or, and, or, if we go to the Western Cape High Court, uh, the JP there, the acting JP, and say, please expedite either the appeal or the, or part B, again, the thing will be done, let's say, longer than two weeks in, the, in that case. J just to, just to get a sense of, of where this notice of motion goes. Yes, ma'am. If I were to decide that the JSC's decision was rational yes. and can't be set aside, yes. what is left of your case? Yes. Can you tell me that? Yes, yes, I'll tell you, my lord. The, if, if, you, if you decide that <coughs> the JSC's decision was rational in the declarator sense, yeah. yes. <coughs> Well, the, the, that's why, my lord, we have uh, the alternative yeah. prayer. So we say... But I mean, of course, part <coughs> BB would have to fall away. It, it may and it may not. I'll, I'll answer that, my lord. Right, uh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But, but uh, the... the, the, um, the, the, the uh, because, remember, the, the, there's a whole issue about uh, Rule 53 and what have you yes. in, in yeah. BB. But, but uh, uh, I, I'll work with your lordship. If, if your lordship were to say, uh, as your lordship might be entitled to, if your lordship were to say, look, the um, decision, uh, 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 I'm not giving you the declarator because I agree with the JC's thing in the letter. And, and oh, I don't have to agree with it. I just have to decide it's rational. <laughs> yes, the, yeah. the, the, that is yeah. rational. No, yeah. no, I, I mean it in that sense. It's yeah. like that right and wrong thing. Yeah. The, 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 then your lordship, the impact of that lordship's order may or may not be to render academic uh, the uh, assuming there are no appeals remember it's a final order oh by the way let me clarify that because it's, it's this is said as if it's an insult as if we we're, were no it is paragraph two is seeking a final declarator yes it's not no, two that's, ways about that's it. how i understand yeah, it it's yeah. not a, they say as uh, JSC says as we want them to believe that is interim no we, we don't want them to believe anything so your lordship is quite right. It, it, it's, it's conceivable that uh, a granting <coughs> of, 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 or even a refusal of, um, of, of, of paragraph two might render the, 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 the second part to be, to be academic. But that, that's not important for the purposes of, 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 it's important for the second question that your lordship asked me, which is uh, what happens then? Yeah. So that's the first thing that might happen. But what will certainly happen is that the uh, uh, prayer three will then have to kick in. And that's why prayer three starts with the words alternative to prayer yeah, two. Yeah. In other words, if you fail in prayer two, then we say the interdict. 
and the interdict is asked for, and let me get into that, my lord. Uh, so uh, your prima facie right that you assert on, um, when you ask for an interim interdict is more extensive mm -hmm. than the right to a rational decision uh, from True. the JSC. Is True. that what you're saying? Yes, my lord. So and you rely on other rights. Yes, and yeah. all these things about, oh, the courts are going to fall apart and what, what they then come into it. And, and, and the lordship would do... Well, that's the, because it's a prima, it's an interim interdict and the balance of absolutely. convenience is relevant. Absolutely, it comes, exactly. But the, 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 whether or not the courts are going to fall apart. Yeah. Um, so, so what are, other than the right to a rational decision from the JSC, mm. well, what, what rights, do you, okay. what you rights do you rely on for the purposes of the interim interdict, I yes. suppose, is the question. Yes, my lord. Let, let, okay, can I, if your lordship allows me just to yes, do this yes, first. Yes, yes, please. I'm going to address that question uh, of the of the alternative, but uh, let me just wrap up the the, 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 the first part, my lord. If your lordship grants paragraph two, yeah, then your lordship obviously then will jump paragraph three, yeah, and then what we want your lordship to go, we will then go to paragraph four, yeah, which is what I want to address there. So your lordship would then grant appropriate, just, and or equitable relief in terms of 172.1b which we discussed, and that is the May, uh, yeah. and or Section 38 of the Constitution. And this here is the important part, my lord, including the inter uh, dictatorial relief set out at Prayer 3. In other words, the lordship may, uh, in the wide discretion of, um, inter of uh, what you call, um, um, uh, just an equitable remedy, the lordship might say, don't sit on Monday, but a lordship could say something else. A lordship could say, as Mr. Ngalani said. Well, I understand your submission to be, if I grant paragraph two, that's mm. a final order. Yes. I, I am then at large yes. to exercise an equitable discretion. Absolutely. To make an appropriate order. Yes. That may include interdictory relief or not. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay. to, to give effect to the consequences of, that of the illegal. declaration. That's good. Yeah. That's all, my lord. So yeah. that's the main relief dusted, yeah. done and dusted. Now yeah. let's come to your Lordship's question. Yeah. If all of that doesn't materialize, <coughs> then your Lordship say, well, then what? Then we say, we say, my Lord, that there are three grounds, and I'm going to eliminate th two quickly now. There are three grounds upon which your Lordship could still grant the interdict. One is that your Lordship would, uh, could, uh, there's a case called, um, over school van van Varmelo. Yes. Um, it's it, we, we've loaded it up and it's referred to in, in in our heads. Right. In that case, my lord, and also this was reaffirmed in the um, impeachment case that we did in in uh, 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 even think your lordship might have been there. But in the impeachment judgment, your lordship will remember that the. So who were we impeaching? Uh, 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 <laughs> Uh, the, uh, the first respondent's uh, president. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, no, I don't think I was there. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Uh, yeah. maybe it was the UDM case, yes. Yeah. But, um, my lord, in, the, in that case, the Constitutional Court affirmed this principle of uh, Chapter J of, of uh, Warwick School van Varmelo. Actually, in another case, I was trying to say that the uh, matter was wrongly decided. Yeah. But, but it is the law. Here's the law, my lord. The Van Varmelo says that the conception that the passage quoted in our heads, your logic will see it, uh, yeah. paraphrasing, says this. It is, it, is, it is not true that you can only do 172.1b if you find in, in our favor in 172.1a. Yeah, it's in paragraph. Um, 19 uh, 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 pa pa page 19-12-112 paragraph 122 of our uh, heads my and it reads as follows I'll, yes, I'll, I, have I won't read the whole thing it says the remedial power envisaged in section 172 1b is not is not only and the word is only is not only available when a court makes an order of constitutional invalidity of a law under co conduct under section 172 1b <laughs> So, Musenaka uh, DCJ in that matter. Well, it's when deciding a constitutional matter within my power. Yes. And the that obviously goes much further than those two. Absolutely. Yeah. All of us, until that point, we, we, we thought the key 
to mm -hmm. 1721B is that you must have the declarator yeah. 1721A. But Musanaka uh, DCJ said no. The, the wide powers of the court are not confined to, you may not get your declarator, but you can, the court can still. So that's the first basis upon which this court, my lord, could grant the, let's call it the, 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 the relief in, mm -hmm. in form, including, or, or, or not, the, court, the court could say, for example, I'm giving you this um, uh, interim relief, but it's for two months. And in that two months, you must, as, as uh, what Mr. Malano was saying, in that two or three months, you must have done everything and you must come back here if you if you, if you if yeah no if I've, got, I've got that mm -hmm. what what i'm what i'd like to zero in on yes. is if if i were not for any reason to be convinced that you're entitled to paragraph two mm. is there any other basis for an ordinary interim interdict what other prima facie rights yes. do you rely on no, my lord. The, uh, do you or don't you i suppose is the question yeah, yeah. yeah. no my lord, my lord. that's why i'm raising yeah. this case I'm saying, even if your lordship is against me on paragraph two, yeah. on prayer two, your lordship on the authority of Van Varmelo mm -hmm. is still able to grant 172.1b relief. And on that basis, that 172.1b relief may or may not include a, um, a um, what you call, a, 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 the, the, the interim order that looks like two. It might be something else, and that's where I was. I said, your lordship. So I'd have to find some sort of. No, of course. I'm, I'm constitutional there, breach or yes, 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 yes. Pr prima facie right, Ab absolutely, absolutely. A violation, yes. prima facie uh, violation of a right. Yes, yes. Yeah. No, 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 my lord, we're, we're together. I'm right. simply saying I, I'm just making registering the point yes, yes. that it is not totally dependent on on yes. on, on, a, on on two. Okay. Yes. Put that aside. Your yeah. lordship is then right. Now, what, 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 if we now then confine ourselves into the 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 let's call it the interdict. Mm. Whether that interdict comes from 172.1b, whether it comes from one section 38 appropriate relief, or whether it comes from the common law, mm. it, 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 for, for the purposes of this discussion, it, the, it, 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 it doesn't matter. The, the only thing is that, my lord, it, it, the, 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 if it comes from 172.1b, your lordship's discussion is much wider. If it comes from 130, from 38, it's even wider because for say, for say, your lordship will know for say, says that uh, appropriate relief really means the court can f even fashion new remedies that have never been seen under the sun. Yeah. As long as you don't reward punitive damages, that's... Yes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> unfortunately, yeah, for some of us. Yeah. Uh, or, or constitutional, constitutional damages, damages yeah. except in that's the most another, yeah. extraordinary of situations. Uh, it is more than a yeah. sign my lord. For say was, in 19, was the, my first case in the constitutional court, 1996. Yeah, yeah. But uh, unfortunately, the, the court said no constitutional damages. Mm. Subject to that, uh, uh, yes, if Fosel says that. So your lordship's hand, in terms of 172.1b or 38, is really uh, that wide. Yeah. Of course, when it comes to the common law uh, remedy, then it's, it's a little bit more restricted, because then you have to take into account outer and so on and so mm. on. The, all the things that Mr. Malana was dealing with. Although, in my respectful submission, even on Mr. Ngalana's submissions, uh, which he eloquently made on the common law relief, we should succeed. But after Tiora, if, we, if, if that is even remotely possible, then certainly on 172.1b and 38, we, we must uh, uh, succeed. But uh, let me zero in on your Lordship's question. Yeah. The, 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 you see, in this realm, my Lord, my work is much easier. Because once we are here now, I no longer, as I had now, just now, have to say to your Lordship, Dr. Schroeper's Section 19 rights were violated. Mm -hmm. What are Dr. Schroeper's Section 19 rights? His right to participate in the activities of a political party of his choice. That's obviously been limited by, by the non postponement decision. And that, that, that can't be debated. No. MK's right to have, to, to have its member participating in the in the JSC, another Section 19 one right that's obviously also been uh, prima facie at least uh, uh, infringed. Dr. Kappa's dignity right to work and do and be a meaningful uh, 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 citizen that does self worth uh, will be implicated. Dr. Kappa's Section 34 rights, my lord, to appeal, which goes to the whole debate we've had about Section 18. So. I could do a catalog of Dr. Lopez's rights mm. to, uh, that will be implicated, including his right to have a rational decision from the JSC and, and, and all that. All that 
my burden is lighter in the following way, my Lord. Now, all of a sudden, I have all I, all I have to convince your Lordship is that those are prima facie rights open to some doubt. Yes. Whereas in the previous uh, section, I had to show your Lordship that those were actual rights. Yes. So now it's, it's even easier. It's, a, it's, a, it's plain sailing. Because your Lordship could say, mm, well, I'm not sure if the right to participate, but you know, it's, uh, it's open to some doubt, but your Lordship would still have to grant the interim relief. <clears throat> Couple that much lighter burden, my Lord, with everything that Mr. Ngalwana has said about, for example, the impossibility of removing a judge who would be um, uh, uh, unconstitutionally uh, appointed. All sorts of things, my Lord, and I don't want to be alarmist. The kind of litigation that would, could come from the people who, who lose, who, uh, not, not lose, <laughs> who, who are not appointed next week. Yes. Because they can say, oh, well, this thing was, was uh, improperly constituted, and also uh, uh, your lordship uh, um, gets the point. There, there can be a whole lot of things. And that's why we said in our letter, please, JSC, postpone for a short period to avoid a litany of possible litigation. Your, the mind can go as far as it can as to what, what kind of chaos could happen. And that's what we call the, the if the constitutional crisis that has been precipitated. Uh, is allowed to continue. Yeah. So, so what's wrong with that, my lord? What is wrong with saying, please postpone for a month or two, uh, put everyone on terms, and then come back and report to the court so that all of these things, so that Dr. Kropp's right to participate is protected, my lord. His section 19 right. Could and you just, uh, uh, just address me for a moment on the proposition that those rights have been limited by the full court, not by the JSC. No. Uh, yes, thank you, my lord. No, no, no. That's a big it's going to be important for your no, colleagues no, no, to hear what you yes, have to say yes, about no, that. No, of course, yeah. we, we, because we know it's coming. Yeah. That's a fallacy, my lord. The, 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 what we're here about, as I said at the beginning, is not to assail that court. Uh, mm. uh, what we're here about is to assail the JSC's decision the, what, the, the exclusion of Dr. Schroeper from the meeting next mm. week is not as a result of that court order uh, at this stage uh, directly. Mm. It is as, as a result of the decision of the JSC unreasonably and irrationally yeah. not to accede to the postponement. That's, that's a crucial point, my lord. Mm. And but this, is, this is why I wonder whether the additional relief you seek doesn't ultimately collapse back into the proposition that the JSC was irrational. No, no, no. The, uh, of course, because not. The, the, the JSC's position is mm. that bound. It's, it's bound by the by the full court's yes. order. The full court's order um, play, placed Dr. Clope under restraint. Yes. If that if 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 that order does engage the the, the constitutional rights you rely on, um, then uh, it's the order that um, has stop Dr. Thorpey from going to the JSC no. and the order binds the JSC. Yes, yes, yes. So either the JSC is right to draw that conclusion, or rationally yes. to draw that conclusion, yes. or it isn't. Yes. If, it, if, it, if, it, if it isn't, then it's irrational and paragraph yes, two yes, follows. Yes. But if it is, hmm. I wonder how you can impugn the JSC as having violated any of Dr. Thorpey's rights. No, my lord. Uh, uh, please, uh, Lordship, just if you don't hear anything I'm going to say, just hear this. Well, I've heard a lot, <laughs> and I, I will listen. I will. I, I'll listen to what you're about to just say as well. Just this, my lord. Yeah. Remember only this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Only this. The, why we are in this court before you, my lord, this uh, sunny Friday, is because the jo the Judicial Service Commission refused to uh, accede to a postponement yes. decision. Now, the, the, and, and we're saying, my lord, you, the, 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 um, uh, that, the, what excludes Dr. In, okay, put it this way, my lord, let's flip it. If the JSC had acceded to the postponement decision, Dr. Schroeper would not be excluded from the sitting next week. Yes. Okay, so fine. Now, and if 
the JSC had acceded to the postponement decision, let's say maybe even with conditions, uh, what we're asking from your lordship, and say, okay, but we'll only give you two weeks or two weeks or two mm. months or whatever it is, Dr. Klope would not be excluded from the sitting. So the, the proximate cause mm. of Dr. Klope's exclusion from the uh, sitting next week is the JSC's decision. That's it, Valerie. It's not, it's not, of course, if you want to do the normal causation thing, you can say the sine qua non is the court, is the court order. But the proximate, the real cause is the JSC decision. Yes. yes. Thank you, I have the point. You've got the point. Yeah. And my lord, let me then quickly go to um, paragraph 21. No, no, no. Because we don't have time, I'll go to paragraph 30. Five of the Cape Bar case. I'll Thirty-five. The Cape Bar case. Yes. Yeah. Yes, Let me yes, just get that. Yes, yes. Acceptance of counsel's argument. This was now a criticism of the JSC counsel the, when they still thought composition uh, <laughs> means everyone must sit, but they've also changed their stance. Hmm. It, it says um, uh, acceptance of counsel's argument for the JSC. That matters relating to specific high court could be determined in the absence of the judge president of that court and the premier of the province concerned or an alternate designated by both of them, which would be in direct conflict with the provisions of section 171K. What is more, uh, I so believe... Just give me the paragraph number uh, 35, I'm sorry. 35, 35 yeah. yes. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm now with in the you, thank you. Yes. It's, I've just read the long, first long sentence. Yeah. It says, what is more, I believe that it is clear from section 178 of the Constitution that the JSC has been created in a structured and careful manner. Its composition obviously sought to ensure that persons from diverse political, social, and cultural backgrounds representing varying interest groups would participate in this deliberation. And here's the key level of any interpretation of section 178 which would allow decisions of the JC to be validly taken without the unjustified exclusion there's that expression yeah of one or more of these interest groups would therefore negate the very essence of the constitutional design that is what we are here about that careful constitutional design will be completely negated if the uh, there is a, an unjustified exclusion and since we have already agreed about the approximate cause, the unjustified decision, unlike what my learned friends are going to tell you, is not the court order. Because they're going to say, oh, well, how can it be unjustified because there's a court order? No, 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 no. The unjustified exclusion of Dr. Thorpe is the irrational refusal by the JSC of his participation. And therefore, on the authority binding upon you, my lord, of the SCA, your lordship has no option but to, um, to, 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 to find that the, you cannot allow a situation where the careful design of, uh, remember the careful design is even worse in this case, my lord. Normally they say two advocates, two attorneys, yeah, yeah. what have you. Here the constitutional drafters went further. They said six members of the NA, of which at least three, minimum three, must be opposition. So they, 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 it, the constitution is even more prescriptive. That means, my lord, all six could be opposition members, at, but at least 50% uh, 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 must be. Now we have a situation where it's 40%, even if Mr. Ngalwana's interpretation is wrong. We now have 40%, so that's constitutionally repugnant. Let alone Mr. Ngalwana's point, that you might even have the, um, what to call it? unjustified inclusion of the other five, mm. uh, which makes it even more uh, 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 unconstitutional. So, so the, 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 um, the, the, the SCA authority that is binding on your lordship, your lordship, you'll remember in that case, that case court, by the way, was also a bit um, not comfortable with this, but it said, but we're bound by premier. So similarly, your lordship is bound by both premier and uh, bar council and your lordship has no option but to, um, uh, to, 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 to find that the unjustified uh, irrational refusal of the postponement by the JSC is, um, is, 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 is the, um, 
is, is, is the problem that the Lordship must undo. And the Lordship must simply do, if, if, to put it in colloquial language, the Lordship must simply do that which the JSC should have done, which is to say, okay, we'll postpone for a month or two or whatever it is, but this and that and that and that must, must happen so that there's no threat of any constitutional crisis. Everyone is happy, nobody's excluded, nobody goes to court to do anything. And uh, within that limited period, everything is done. At, and uh, I can guarantee at least one of the three things, which is the B, part BB, as I said, my Lord, can happen in a matter of weeks. The others I'm prepared to concede can happen in a month or two because there'll be exchange of heads and what have you. But on the basis of the relief that is uh, sought here, your Lordship has to, even if your Lordship is not with us on the declarator, mm. and I cannot see how your Lordship cannot be with us, in that but even if your Lordship is not, your Lordship, we employ your Lordship <coughs> with the greatest respect to simply uh, then, then fashion, quote unquote, uh, that uh, remedy which will leave nobody, there'll be no uh, chaos. Uh, of course, there'll be inconvenience to all sorts of people, but as you might, I don't want to repeat Mr. Ngalana's submissions, but the balance, yes. on balance, the, that, in, that inconvenience yes. would favor us. My Lord, those are <coughs> our submissions. If there's yeah. anything else, I will deal with it in, um, in, um, in, um, in reply. But in sum, we say interpretation of the court order of Section 18 of uh, Section 178. And we say, if you interpret those three instruments correctly, then it is in our favor. And then we say, uh, give, give us the declarator for the reasons that have been granted, and then paragraph four. But we say, if we are wrong for some reason, then we have the lighter burden in, in terms of the alternative prayer. As a court business minute. Yes, thank so you. Mr. To your logic. Thank you, and thank you for just about keeping to time. Thank you, my um, I'm going to take a 15 minute tea adjournment, come back at noon, and I'll hear from Mr. Mainiche. As a court business. Yes, thank you. Court adjourned. Second.